Hello YouTube, Tim here, and I wanted to talk today about metrics of bow performance. This can be something that you can talk about in regards to PVC bows, wood bows, fiberglass bows, any bow, it doesn't really matter. How do you know if it's a good bow? How do you know if it's a high performance bow? And this is very important when we're testing, in my case, PVC bows, and we're trying to see, do these things really stack up? Do they compare well to wood bows? To, to compound bows and where do they measure? You know, I've there are a whole bunch of different ways that you can look at it, and here here are a few of them. One simple metric, which isn't all that telling, but it's a very good place to start, is peak draw force. It's a great way to compare bows because it's the degree of force, the weight in this case. If you're in uh, America, we're using typically pounds, pounds force to draw to a given length. And normally, with a force draw curve, that increases. You know, we've talked about that, how it starts off low, and then as you draw an increasing number of inches, the draw weight gets higher. So the peak draw force is, say, 50 pounds at 28 inches. There you go. Then you can compare that with another bow that's 45 pounds. It doesn't tell you much about its performance, but it's a good place to start, mostly because that's limited by the person. So it's good to know. Once you have that and you measure other things like the stored energy in the bow, then you have another metric for comparison. You can say, well, and put very briefly, the stored energy would be the area under the force draw curve. So it's everything over here. In a compound bow, it might be something more like this. You know, it balloons higher, gets higher quicker then lets off a little bit at the end. In that case, you're storing more energy. Even though the ultimate draw weight might be very low, the peak draw weight might only be you know, the same 50 pounds, you're storing more energy. So there again, you know that's good. It doesn't mean you're doing anything with that energy, but it means you could be. So still, good to know that you have a 50 pound bow and you store 50 foot pounds of energy. That's the unit that you measure for stored energy in, in America, again, imperial countries. The whole other thing is you can then make a ratio. The ratio of stored energy to peak draw force. That's a pretty good indicator of how efficient a bow theoretically should be. Now, uh, talking about things like Adam Karpovich, he's a very talented lawyer. He makes traditional Turkish style bows. He's published the the Bible on this subject, on making composite horn bows. And if you're interested in doing that sort of thing, you have to buy his book. I got it um, two years ago for my birthday, I think, and I'm so happy I did. It's one, oh, not only a fun read, packed with information, but it tells you everything you need to know about making a bow. And combine that with Adam's extremely friendly, open nature. You can just talk to him on the web and all the forums that he participates in, and you can learn so much. But according to Adam Karpovich, a good modern bow typically performs about eight, 85 to 96%. Well, the ratio would be 85 to 96% at 28 inches of draw. That's the, the ratio of stored energy to peak draw force. Hold on one second. So. I think he's talking about good fiberglass bows and things like that. Probably not compound bows, which are probably a little bit higher, but at any rate. At 30 inches of draw, this is another important thing, that ratio goes up to about 92 to 104%. So now you're starting to get an idea that stored energy relative to the peak draw force is also a function of draw length. Efficiency goes up as draw length increases, efficiency goes up as arrow weight increases, you know, all of these things matter. So, but in general, if you want to compare two bows, and you could say it has 104% stored energy to peak draw force, you say, wow, that's pretty efficient, that's pretty good, whereas another bow of the same 50 pound draw weight only stores 35 pounds, it should be a no-brainer which is more efficient, which is going to perform better. Not guaranteed, but it's a good indicator. Another thing that you can uh, look at, and I think this is the only one that really matters, is arrow speed. Given a certain equivalent 
uh, grains per pound, then you can compare fairly with the same arrow. That's a one way to do it, either the same arrow or the same grains per pound. It just depends on what you're trying to do. If you're just trying to see the highest absolute speed, then the same arrow is fine. If you're trying to compare one bow to another, apples to apples, you want to use the same grain per pound weight. And then the faster bow is more efficient. That's the really the, the, the best comparison. Or at least it's not necessarily more, more efficient, but if you're talking about metrics of performance, isn't that really the only one that matters if you're talking about uh, seeing how it performs? That is performance. Leaving aside factors like how it feels, the smoothness of the draw, the comfort, hand shock, things like that. But in this case, we're just being clinical. Faster is better. All else the same. I'd always rather have a faster bow rather than a slower bow if it were more comfortable or as comfortable. And this is something I've never really heard other people talk about, but I think this is the best possible metric. Nobody uses it, but I think it's great. It's called grains per pound or grains per foot pound of stored energy. Uh, no, the normal grain per pound metric would be the weight of the arrow dividing it by the draw weight. So a 50-pound bow shooting a 500-grain arrow is 10 grains per pound. But we know about stored energy, right? One force draw curve could be very con concave, and that means you're not storing as much energy relative to the draw weight as you otherwise would. A good baseline would be wh how much would a straight line store, how much would the concave line store, and then how much would a convex line store. And you can compare them all. So one is going to be uh, the baseline, the straight line. And the short bows tend to have a lot of stack, meaning they tend to be very, very concave for a given draw weight. So they tend to store very little energy. Now, the thing is, if you use 10 grains per pound with a bow like that, it's going to perform terribly. But I think, and I think you'll agree, a more fair comparison is grains per foot pound of energy stored. So if you s the peak draw weight is 50 pounds, but you only store 35 pounds, I think a fair comparison would be comparing uh, a 35 or 350 grain arrow to the 35 foot pounds of stored energy to another bow that's by uh, 500 grains and 50 pounds of stored energy. Then it's 10 and 10. It's 10 grains per foot pound of stored energy in both cases. That would be a fair comparison, and that's what I'd like to see. I've never seen other people do that, but I think it's worthwhile, because it's it, it doesn't take into account the peak draw force, which, like I said, it's important because I can only draw 50 pounds, I can only draw 80 pounds. That's the threshold. But within that, as long as that's not a concern and you're just talking about efficiency, what's it doing with the energy that it stores is more interesting to me. If both of them use... Well, anyway, that's it. That's all I have to say. I could talk about this a long time. But those are the, the basic ways that you can measure bow performance. You can look at the peak draw force, look at the stored energy, the raw arrow speed, the ratio of stored energy to peak draw force. You can look at the grains per... Uh, con considering grains per pound in relation to all of this. And my favorite metric, grains per foot-pound of stored energy. If you have feedback on this, I'd love to hear it, especially if you like my idea of grains per foot pound of stored energy. If you don't like it, I don't want to hear from you. I'm kidding. I do. Anyway, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think, and um, I'll be reading the comments. I might not get back to you as soon as I'd like, just due to moving, troubles, things like that, but I promise you I do read comments, even though I don't always respond to them recently, and I'm going to improve on that as soon as I can. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys soon.